Yes, your temple said. Hello and so hello and welcome. Uh, this is the news. This is the road soda news. The only news you really need. Giving you the the interesting shit that's out there in the world. I'm Isaiah. With me is Miss uh, Sweaty Underboob. <laughs> oh my god. Christy, how are those tits today? I don't think you've ever seen a sweaty underboob. Like it happens. It's like the world's largest nut sack on your chest. Mm, so so it happens. But like I don't think we've ever been in a situation. Right. Well, I just know. All right. How are how are they hanging? It's a very frigid 68 degrees in here. So they are firm, upright, slightly pointed. Slightly pointed. Mm. 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 Oh. Oh. Somebody once asked me if I had, um, talking about nipples, and I was telling them that my nipples are like see-through. They're like, I don't have like those dark pink ones. They're like almost the same color as my skin. So they kind of all blend together. And he was like, yeah, you got those smooth ones or you got those Stevie Wonders. Those Stevie Wonders. And that was the best thing I've ever heard. Yeah, you know, like the the, little, the bumpy nipples. Bump. Oh, Braille nipples. So that's yeah. a, there's layers Stevie to Wonders. that joke. Okay. That's what so. I just, that's too hard. I got to think. Oh, Stevie Wonder. It's also right, that's blind what he went like it, Stevie and had a feel. Oh, it's the hand motion. See, we got video now. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I'm glad they can see your temple set. Okay, enough of tits. Uh, first up, <laughs> our first article. And always down in the description or down in the info here, uh, you'll, you'll see the links to the news if you want to follow along. Get out of here, buddy. Uh, if you'd like to follow along on the news articles, you can do that. <clears throat> This one is an exclusive, a fucking, fucking exclusive. exclusive victim of a man who pleaded guilty in diaper fetish human trafficking scheme breaks silence. I feel like that uh, title could use some punctuation. I think it just could use some work. Yeah, it's, that's a lot. It's a lot of adjectives. There's a lot of hot words hot. in there, so I get it. Fetish. Diaper. diaper. Mm. human trafficking scheme break S- silence they just took like all those catch victim victim you know we know you love the victims i am a victim of this article <laughs> this came uh this comes to us from wdsu.com that's the local news Babe, six your headset oh, oh sorry uh that's the <laughs> local news there in uh new orleans uh new orleans <laughs> A victim of a man who pleaded guilty to human trafficking charges in connections with a diaper fetish scheme has broken her silence. Broken her silence. Well, she's the victim. Victim of a man. Got it, got it, got it. it. Sorry. Uh, Rutledge Dees pleaded guilty. What a name. Dees. Sorry. Rutledge Dees. Dirty diapers in your face. I like these notes a little bit better, but that'll work. I'm just trying to make it relevant. Pleaded guilty to faking being mentally disabled to get unsuspecting women to change his diapers. <laughs> I like this one already. I think I I heard about this. I did the, not originally. Hear about this. Yeah, there was a guy who was calling, and I don't know if it's the same guy or maybe this is like there's billions of people in the world. There's probably two of them. There was a guy who was calling nurses, like in-home nurses. Mm-hmm as like a, a guardian of somebody who is mentally challenged and hiring these these nurses to come over uh, to the house and take care of him. It was just him. They would come over, he would act mentally challenged. They, he would act totally R-worded and they would come in and then he would, um, you know, like shit in his pants and then they would have to like wipe his ass and stuff and he'd totally get a fucking boner. I really wish that you liked Portlandia because they have the skit where Fred Armisen, um Wait, no, that's Broad City. Never mind. Broad City, remember, I showed you that show. It's uh, two girls in Comedy Central, and there's like a curly-haired Jew, and everybody says that I'm her, and I remind Okay. You think you're a Jew now? There's this character in the show called Broad City, and okay. there's this girl, and everyone's like, oh, my God, you are so Alana, that's so you, and everybody always says that, and she's the curly-headed Jew. They're both Jewish in the show. I showed you the show a couple times. I think it was like in the very beginning when we were dating. Anyway, you liked it. It was really funny. And they do this skit where Fred Armisen calls them over and they're like trying to make money to go like buy booze or something stupid. 
and on craigslist so they like show up at his house and they're supposed to just be cleaning but it's just fred armison and nothing but a giant diaper and he's like i'm a baby i can't do anything and he like wants them to take off their shirt and like clean and stuff and at the end they're like all right dude this is fucked up and they go to leave and the scene ends where uh, the phone rings and Fred Armisen pulls his cell phone out of his diaper after like talking like a baby and making him do all the shit. He's like, uh, yeah, what's up, man? You know, like, and acts all professional. What happened? That's, that's, uh, what happened? What just happened there? Oh. I just wanted to, uh... <gasps> Yes! <laughs> yes! Dude! It's so good. This guy. So this is basically the guy that we're dealing with right here. Exactly. Um, yeah. So here, one of the victims spoke out exclusively with WDSU about her experience. Dees will not serve jail time, only probation after his admission of guilt and plea. At least one Interesting. of his... I mean, he's not really hurting anybody. I mean, yeah, it is. It's sexually... It's sexual abuse, 100%. But that's the worst of what he's doing. Um, because he was totally getting a boner when they were wiping his ass. Um, at least, but now he's a, accused of human trafficking. I want to hear how that plays in. At least one of his victims has little faith in him sticking to the deal, the terms of his probation. I think there is definitely something wrong if he thinks it's all right for someone to change his diaper is good, the woman said. She asked not to be identified. The crimes happened uptown where Dees lives, near Fret Ferret. Cool name. Um, when he was arrested, officers found boxes of diapers in his apartment. The victim said she couldn't believe what had happened. It was disgusting. <laughs> None of the victims knew they were being duped and all believed Dees was mentally disabled, according to the victim. That's I really want to see his role playing. Do you want to just look him up? Rutledge. Here, let me... Uh... No, I'm just like I'm thinking about what he... I mean, that's like a lot of commitment. Just sit there and act totally talked that's yeah we can't use talked it's not ours it's not our word with retarded wow babe what if what if that's like <clears throat> it's not okay I, I type in rutledge d and it's um i, I wouldn't be able to tell you <laughs> it doesn't seem like rutledge d's right yeah d-e-a-s Oh, there he is. That's put him up there. Put him up there. Not a not too hard for this man to act. Oh uh, my act god! Really not hard for him. Look at him. Ew! To be a disabled teen, that I'm, is fucked up, I'm gonna, and that's disgusting. I'm gonna I'm gonna change, change my diaper. I pooped. That's what I mean. I want to know his role playing. Like I want to know what route he took. What if he's like he doesn't even act? Ew! There, there's a diapy. Yeah, there is a... Dude, I'd be pissed. I would want way more than probation for that shit. That's fucking disgusting. Well, I'm not saying he should have like 10 years in prison or anything, but to just like he should have to go to a nursing home and change diapers. It's way worse than that. For no, he's obviously into that. I don't know if he'd mind. I don't know if he's into changing other people's diapers. I don't know if you know anything about the the Dom sub R worded world, but um, it's you know. Probably not, because I think we know what role I would play in that. Wipe my bot plus. I block all car. There we go. Check this out. I just wanted to get back up to the to our article here. Actually, you know what? Let's leave our let's leave our good friend's face up. Face up with him, Miss Mr. D. I really want to continue with this article. Yeah, let's continue. This is a good article, huh? Uh the crime happened up time. The victim said she couldn't believe. It was disgusting. None of the victims knew they were being duped. Dees was initially charged with sexual battery, but those charges were later dropped. Ridiculous. Yeah, why would they drop? Uh, the victims, he must have a dope lawyer. The dope lawyer or what they're asking to be, yeah, charged yeah. with. The victims who Dees found on an app for care agreed... <laughs> a, what is it? It's like Tinder for... What the well, fuck? There's, like, there's care apps and stuff. That's how you find like babysitters and stuff like that. Yeah. So... He must have really went to this website and created need a whole a, need, need a, babysitter. a whole resume. Please have a babysitter. Uh, agreed to the deal where the 30-year-old does five years probation with numerous restrictions. He isn't allowed to have any social media. It must go to Alcoholics Anonymous meetings and see a counselor, according to the plea agreement. The victim said 
she is hoping for the best. Hopefully he follows through with that, the woman said. I don't believe that he will because five years is a long time. I hope he can make himself better. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely more into the route of like the rehabilitation. I get that as opposed to just like locking people up. Mm -hmm. But that dude, dude needs more than AA. Yeah, he needs. I think he would be more pissed if you had to like change his diaper. Change his own diaper? If you had to change his diaper. Oh, yeah, for sure I would be. Of course I'd be pissed if I was one change. But also not so much because I'm already changing diapers like that on the regular and getting paid for it. Like, literally, they, they didn't know they were being duped because it's what they're doing that all the time. Yeah, but, like, that's, like, when I went to school to be a CNA and stuff. And mm -hmm. then you have to, like, practice how to, like, wipe people's vaginas and buttholes. You have to, like, wrap the oh, washcloth around do this. And you go around, around, and down. And you roll them over and all this stuff. There is something way different about changing an adorable baby's diaper. Right, of Even course. though they're horrific than yeah. some fucked up meth but I mean, these looking people, right and but what i'm saying is those nurses were in that kind of like they were going to people who, with, who were mentally anyway. yeah for mentally challenged people like adults and changing their diapers yeah i see the only difference <clears throat> is when they were changing this guy's diaper he was getting hard which also that didn't set off any alarms because i guess a lot of people a lot of adults that they're out there changing diapers that's like the of. tiktok i sent you the other day do you watch those when i send them to you i do but i don't remember just you sending me one that I did. relates it was like, at all to wiping a grown man's ass and it him getting does a because it's about this girl who asks why asks um she, you know they like do the thing where they're like tiktok why does my boyfriend talk forever to take a shut He's like, because every time we take a shit in the morning, we get a boner and we're sitting in there trying to figure out how to not get this boner. So you don't think out, we come out and we're doing this out or the other. But every single man in the morning when he wakes up and he goes to take a shit because your prostate is being affected. Touched. You get a boner. I don't. If TikTok says it, it's true. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I'm sure there are a lot of men. Um, I don't even think when I was younger going through puberty. I would get bones when I was sitting on the can. But it makes sense, though, because... I mean, it, it does. Who doesn't love a blumpkin, you know? Who does? I mean, you know. I know. I don't know anybody. All right. This just in. Here's the next news article. Christy, would you please shut up and read this one? Your only caption is, this just in? Yeah, that's it. This just in. Police shut down Christmas mall kiosk after intoxicated Santa, Mrs. Claus, and Elf had a threesome in public. Please pull up the picture of these people. <laughs> yes. Yes. Where does it happen? Fuck you. What? An Ohio Christmas uh -huh. mall kiosk was shut down by police this week after three people are fucking each other in public. Zanesville, it's about an hour outside of Columbus. Real close to where you are. It really is. Too bad you missed it. It's huh? halfway in between Columbus and like where my mom grew up and the bunch of hillbillies, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Zanesville police intervened after several complaints of shoppers alleged that inappropriate sexual behavior was taking place. These are great names. Elmer Hines, 73, Jeanette Weaver, 62, and Elliot McCannister, 43, were found intoxicated and in possession of crack cocaine, crystal meth, marijuana, and alcohol before being arrested by Fucking Zanesville no, police. That's a party. Miss Claus say? was sitting on Santa's lap, moaning and groaning while he had his pants down and while we waited in line. Oh my God. Is this like the kiosk to get your picture taken or something? I hope. Why are people waiting? What else do you want? Why is this line taking so long? Oh. <laughs> the elf started masturbating under his trousers and fondling Mrs. Claus's breasts, as well as fresh French kiss, fresh kissing Santa Claus at French the same kissing? time. Can just say kissing? I mean. it's none of this. It's not. Yeah. It's. Ah, yes. Ah. One shopper also snapped pictures of Elliot McCannister dressed as an elf and partaking in anal sex with one of the plastic reindeers. Ooh, partaking. <laughs> oh as if that, that, that reindeer <laughs> right. was like, do you want to? <laughs> I was going to anyway. Do you want to? What they were doing was extremely offensive, but I'd been waiting in line for over an hour and my four-year-old daughter would have never forgiven me if we had left. She was so eager to meet Santa Claus. She would have So what's the it. point? Like to just sit there and wait until they're done and then be like, all right, shit on Santa's lap. Let's get this picture. Can you wrap it up, Santa? <laughs> oh my God. Line's getting pretty long. 
Colony Square Mall administrators have since instated a no alcohol policy for future employees at the Christmas Mall kiosk to prevent further incidents, said officials. So that is amazing. Crazy article. So like I would be pissed if that happened in general, but could you imagine walking up on the three of them? So this guy is fucking is butt fucking the reindeer. Which one do you think is Santa? Jerking, I fucking hate you. What? I'm just asking which one do you think Santa Claus is? The middle one. You're right. <laughs> it's 2020, baby. Um so here's the Santa deal. Santa has no chance. So so when I when I saw this article, uh I went to the comments that was attached to it. Not, it's not on this site. It was a link from another site. I went to, I went to the comments mm -hmm. because as soon as, so what I do is I read the title, I open it, and this is what I look at. I don't go down. I just see if there's like a picture. I look at the picture. I read the title, and then I go, I, I get a feel for it, right? I saw the pictures. I read the title. I immediately went to the comments. Fake news. No. Yeah. Why'd you have to spoil that for everybody? For, well, because I just don't want people to run around thinking that this really happened. I do. I know. No, not that's not. Not to say not, that it couldn't happen, but this, yeah. That's it's from not a real? website that does, yeah. This is from the World News Daily Report. I don't know if this is, I think this site is like an onion type of site. Um, but I do, I, I went through and started looking at it and people were, they're like, yeah, you can scroll down. There's more articles. They're all really flipping outrageous and they're all fake which i mean that's it looks there's nothing about it that screams fake to be honest that's why no, it's because so it even difficult. has a picture of the police zanesville police were forced to intervene mm -hmm. after the intoxicated trio took part i mean i can google picture of cop at podium oh you can yeah how and do I, you get that that's crazy with the google you can the, do that i can google type Thank it you. i can google type it I just thought well, it was still a fun article. And I wanted to see. You I get, do so. agree, and I also really appreciate the choice of Zanesville. Yeah, and also that was sold it for me because I, I was wish like, Ohio. All that, that meant was, something to you. I was like, I put it in there anyway. Oh, it means something to me. I'm. Are you sure? Are you sure? Are I don't. You, sure? Let's, you know what? For us, for road soda, it's real. Next article. Get your fucking asses ready. Maybe I shouldn't. Uh, am I allowed? Can I curse? It's my show. It's our show. Can We're maybe. worried about cursing at this point. Yeah, I know, right? I just don't know anything about this. Uh, here we go. Tensions have run high for too long. Is this next article? How's that? Lame. Lame? Yeah. Boy Scouts of America accuse Girl Scouts of starting war. <laughs> it's come to us from BBC News. And this is what BBC calls news. I know, right? Where's the where's the three o? Where's the crack? Where's the fucking meth? Come on, BBC. Where's the anal? Where's the reindeer anal? A recruitment drive by the Boy Scouts of America is proving highly damaging to the Girl Scouts. What? Why? Lawyers act, but they're, they're, it doesn't make any sense. How is it affecting the Girl Scouts? Lawyers acting for the later organization say. Uh. Yeah, that's the about, that's about ladder. Later. I love you. Hosen. <laughs> the infringement meant many parents mistakenly signed their daughters up for the Boy Scouts and they knew what they were doing. Well, they thought it was the Girl Scouts. How, but how do they how does the Boy Scouts knowingly do that and like dupe people into doing that? The Boy Scouts dropped the word boy from its recruitment program and opened up to female members in 2018. Whoa. So just the Scouts. You want some of that girl shit? You want to you be a salesman for a, some kind of Ponzi scheme? Or when you come over here and learn how to fish? So then what happens? Do the boys have to wear the little brown skirts and the knee highs? Because I was in Girl Scouts and I had the the head to toe decked out outfit, the vest, I had my patches, I had my undershirt, I had my brown skirt, my knee high socks with little fringe tassels hanging off the side. So who wears what? Or do all the girls now have to wear like the blue Boy Scouts uniform? Yeah, when they're in the Boy Scouts. This is the Scouts. This is the Scouts, yeah. With that, that's the thing, the Girl, Scout, the Girl Scouts still exist, but the Boy Scouts dropped boy and are like, fucking get them in here, scouting. You wanna be a scout? It's very progressive. Fuck 2020. We should have watched Death to 2020 for the moment. We should looking. have watched Death. I'm just over it. I am too. I thought about that too because I really wanted That's to watch it. And want. then I'm like, yeah. I'm over why it. bring... Yeah. It's like all you see is like every other post on Facebook, Instagram, or anywhere you go that there can be a post. It's people whining and bitching about the year. It's like, how about... What if you suck? 
What about Touché. that? What have you sucked? Because, I mean, what it was I mean, it's a shitty year, but it was like, I had a really sure. great year. Yeah. Like, it, shitty right. things happened. It's a very shitty year. A lot of shitty things happened. And I don't want to say that in a way that sort of demeans any of that or belittles sort of makes smaller of the actual situation. Because it mm-hmm. was, it's bad. And it's bad for a lot of people, small businesses, right. family members, older people, fucking bad, right? Yeah, but that was a by very and large, thing for me to yeah. say. But by and <clears throat> large, you know, uh, in a lot of people's a lot of people's personal lives, most of the effect came from just sheer fear of the year and like them because they were being told, "Hey, this, everything sucks." They would really just lean it into it and be like, "Well, it all fucking sucks." Yeah, I bet you know? yeah, there's like other than like all the personal stories people post and write yeah. about like. The- I'm not saying there's no shortage of actual things that are affecting actual people. shit actual shit but i think there's also a very large number of people who they didn't lose their jobs they didn't nothing really changed in their lives other than now every time they go on social media everyone's telling that 2020 sucks and you gotta be afraid and so they stopped like giving a shit about their bodies they stopped going to the fucking gym they stopped just caring about it they're just depressed and they whine and they blame it on the year and um well what do you blame it on when you do that you <laughs> all righty <laughs> This next article. Yeah, I don't even want to fuck it. This article goes on for fucking ever. Yeah, I know. That's why we're not reading it. The most elaborate scheme to getting out of writing thank you cards award goes to. I was still to reading. Wait, where are you, where are you at? I was the next st- article. That's the, the headline for the next article. What is it? The most elaborate scheme <laughs> for getting out of writing thank you cards award goes to. Please take it away. CBS frets too many thank you emails contributing to global warming. I don't even understand. (laughs) Please continue. A recent CBS This Morning segment insisted that too many emails, little messages such as thank you and got it would contribute to global warning. Warning. Did I say that? Global warning, guys. (laughs) Hey, it's a globe. (laughs) Watch out. Speaking on Wednesday, correspondent Mark Phillips attempted to downplay the fact that COVID-19 would lead to a decrease in global carbon. E- carbon. I'm sounding like you. Carbon emissions. Thing. He focuses on how emails could offset the saved carbon emissions from less flying, driving, and commuting as a result of COVID-19 lockdowns. I'm still not understanding any of this. Phillips, however, emphasizes that humans ought to hold the smugness. Working from home is not cost free. And the more of us who do it, the more environmentally expensive it becomes. You know, because you're not driving as much and you're not. uh, Isn't that a good thing? I don't know. I don't know. I was being facetious. No, but I don't understand. Phillips, where are you actually? Hold the smugness. Phillips um, even slams little texts. Such as thank you and got it. Every email and text, especially the unnecessary little ones, every thank you, every got it, every time we hit send or download or stream or Zoom, they all require power. Somewhere massive banks of computers are storing and processing that data, sucking up enormous amounts of electrical energy to do it. The cloud doesn't so much have a silver lining as a carbon one. This Dude, guy, you can't fucking win. This is 2020. This, Everybody's offended. Everything you do is wrong. You drive in your car, you're killing the planet. You send in an email, you're killing the planet. Just look at this guy. All this guy is, he's, he's sick. His wife finally got an iPhone. She finally learned how to text. And he's over it. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to, uh, this is, you, I'm a, no texting. No thank you. I don't need to text you thank you. I'm saving the world. You're welcome. He looks angry. He looks, yeah. He looks like he's over a lot of stuff. Uh, but also, this is... I, I don't even have the words to, to really describe. Like, you're, you're pointing yourself in such a stupid direction. Like, you're putting so much brain power and, like, writing and whatever, whatever platform this jackass with the glasses has. It's like, dude, point it towards something else like that it just seems so like that's what's doing it so you're telling me sending a text i'd like to continue i just want to so you're telling me sending a text is more damaging to the environment than driving a car is that does that that's not like yeah i get it but like 
it's so there's so many levels where, where you send that text there's so many levels it has to go through to where it actually affects the environment because like right here it's on a battery that's not affecting the environment the only it was affected when i hooked it onto a charger and it charged it from the wall which had to go back to a fucking facility and then maybe they burned some coal but do you know how much it took th to charge this? I like what think it did? in the next paragraph he explains that. Please. Okay. I'm Let's so do sorry. It. Let's do it. I, love I, it. I, I value your feelings. And I feel it doesn't feel like way. you do, but. Good. Now that you know. Ahead. Think about it. Every email we send not only requires electricity to write as it travels across the internet and gets stored and transferred from one mega server to another, gobbling up energy along the way. Then if it gets read, it sucks up even more power. An email may just may use just 5% of the power needed to deliver a paper letter, but we send and receive gazillions of them. Someone here has actually done the math and figured that if everyone in Britain sent one less thank you email a day, the carbon saving would be like taking about three and a half thousand cars off the road. It's a rough calculation, but the principle is accurate. That is surprising. I think... But it's, just like damned if you do, damned if you don't. I think it's bullshit. I wow. really, I really think so. So he says it's a rough calculation, but the you're okay. So in principle, yeah, but it would be so easy to add or take away from one of the variables because how do you measure that? How do you measure that? Like how, there's no there's no accurate way to measure it. Just the the to 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 truly measure if everyone first of all how many are we all sending. How many people are actually sending thank you? I don't. I didn't. I, never, I didn't send any thank yous, emails today. So how? That's where you have to start. Wattex how many people? Are, you nice dick. I love you. That was two right. talks. So I'm just. Let's stick directly to what he's saying. So if everyone in England sent one last thank you, first of all, how do they know how many people are sending thank you? They can't say the whole fucking country because the whole country is not. I'm not sending a thank you email every day. Most people aren't on a like some old housewife. Who just doesn't even like get on a computer and if it is it's just to like play mahjong or some shit like that it's, but there's a business guy who's sending a couple every day or two three maybe there's a business guy sending 10. Well, don't you have access to all those transcripts anyways you can go back and get you know, can contact phone companies and and see right but what's the, been exchanged the so wouldn't they have access to that no no you couldn't you couldn't uh, this guy running these calculations would have to access computers or like private um, what are they called? Servers. He would have to access private servers mm -hmm. that are owned by com most companies. Like we own our own servers because we're a, a massive company and we got to save a lot of data. So they have their own small little servers and all that stuff is saved on their servers. So he would have to go to their server and be like, I just want to read all your emails to see which ones people just say thank you. It's, it's <clears throat> to, to even calculate it is so to try to calculate and then to try to calculate how much energy it's actually taking. I don't think this guy understands how small or anybody calculating this shit understands the, all the data that it takes to send thank you saved on a server. He's like, it's gotta be saved on servers. This guy does not comprehend how much memory or how like, how how small it is how efficient and like how efficient we are with memory right now like they could fit 200 gigs in in my thumbnail and the words thank you being saved on these servers like i don't think you understand like trillions we're talking about trillions and trillions of thank you gazillions do you think he did you just shush me no i said do you think he generally said gazillions like there was, he was like, it's quoted. He, he said gazillions, but you think he meant the number gazillion or was he just like, oh, gazillions? Because <laughs> I don't think gazillions a thing. I, where, I, I think. Where was it? Oh, so where, where, where do you say the gazillion? I think we part? get that you think CBS this morning is full of shit because I don't think CBS you know. Is. I don't think the National Pulse or CBS, whoever wrote this, I don't think they're wrong. They just want a story. And this is like clickbait fucking awesome story. Yeah. You, just like you said, damned if you do, damned if you don't. But they go to this jackass who's literally making shit up. They don't, they don't know as the, the writers. They're just like, do you know this stuff? And the guy's like, look at my fucking glasses. Of course I know this shit. And I got a computer with this weird lamp set up here. Of course I know this stuff. And they're like, good enough for me. Let's write it down. And then they just put it out because they don't really give a shit. They literally posted this on the internet. The guy's like, 
They're, they come to this fucking jackass and he's like, don't send thank you, less screens, you know, because it's fucking, don't send thank you and whatnot. And they're like, cool, we're going to post this on our website. Do you want to like send this to your friends so they can see it? So we're just trying to post a story to get as many views as we can. He's like, get this angle. I look, it's just so, f this guy is, he's the worst. I don't Let's, know. I just I had a stare like at his face. He's the worst. Who's Mark Phillips? Mark Phillips, the guy that wrote this, or sorry, the, the yeah. guy in that picture. Yeah. Look him up. Yeah. I bet you. Who's Mark Phillips? Mark I Phillips. bet you 10. They don't even say. It just says correspondent Mark Phillips. Who Correspondent of what? It's it, it's not PhD. It's not Dr. Mark Phillips. It's not of the blank institute. It's a correspondent to what? To what are you corresponding to? Just fucking look at my glasses, man. Wow. I know this stuff. You're... Quit, quit asking questions. I crunch the numbers. Look. And, and he said, he basically said, I know a guy who crunched the numbers. He didn't give a name. He didn't say how they did it. Nothing. He's like, fucking some guy crunched the numbers. I know a guy who did it. Mark Phillips is just a Canadian television journalist and currently the senior foreign correspondent based in London for more than two decades. So he's a journalist. I think this guy is literally just over sending thank yous to people. I think he just doesn't want to do it. It's the only way I can I can wrap my he's just like fucking over it. Hey, <laughs> that's like, not Mark Phillips. Is that the same guy? No. My gosh, where was that? Someone he goes, someone here has actually done the math. Someone who? Point him out. Who is it? Who did it? Uh, I don't know. He's not I here. I don't know, today. but this um, He works from home. Mark Phillips CBS does not is not the picture of well, the guy is in the, the National Pulse. Uh, CBS this morning. I don't. Uh, that's just like a, the photo. It just pulled. doesn't look like it. Keeps saying Philip said, Mark Philip said, and then mm -hmm. if you Google Mark Phillips, it's not the glasses guy. No, yeah, Mark Phillips is too easy, too simple of a name. That's why I was looking for like a of the National Institute of Energy Research or some fucking thing. But he's like, no, I fucking just hate sending thank yous. Baby, you're doing that thing where your face is turning really red and it's really scrunched up and you look angry and scary and you've gone off. It's not to you. It's to this guy. No, I know. The I people know. want it. Next article. Let's see if this cheers me up. Yikes. What? You don't think we're having a good time, babe? I'm having a blast. You don't think we're having a good fucking time? I think you'll like this next one. I, I was know, actually probably hoping... a lie. I, I, I was actually... Um, hoping I put it in here because I wasn't sure if I did. And then, um, so I'm very happy that I did. I said, throw them away presents. I don't know why I said that. It doesn't make any sense. Usually it's some kind of joke I can understand. <clears throat> Maybe you should think twice about saving that Chick-fil-A sauce packet. Anything? Packets of Chick-fil-A sauce may explode if held for a period of time. Who the fuck has done this research? Seriously, these fucking idiots. This is fake news. This is ridiculous. How do they know? Oh, who? Who is it? Who says that they're going to explode? To how many? Have you hold thousands of them? Is that how you know? It's fucking bullshit. It's not true. She's just angry because she <laughs> has a bunch of Polynesian is. sauces <laughs> in the butter cabinet. No, I don't. Okay, so what, no, they're Chick-fil-A sauces. They're not there might colonies. be like two Chick-fil-A sauces, and those are from forever ago. There's more than two. <laughs> more than two. Um, it's been said, and also thanks for stealing my fucking article. It's been said that the sauces makes the dish, and many Chick-fil-A... Says who? You fucking know it does. Who? Who? Says you. You've who? had a Chick-fil-A. Mark Phillips? Give me a fucking break. So wait, Christy, this just in. Christy now hates sauces. I thought she was <laughs> the sauce bitch or something like that. I don't know. Weird <laughs> stuff happening out here, folks. It's a Midwestern 2020. <laughs> Chick-fil-A fans will agree that the little sauce packet is an integral part of their meal. The most important part. If you mm. forget the sauce, just go fuck yourself. I don't want it. Here I've it told comes. you that before. If you're going to buy me the nuggets and like you forget the sauce, I like... I'm not going to be mad, but like, I won't eat the nuggets. And I also won't talk to you. This is so much so <laughs> that they'll go to great lengths to get extras to take home. Oh, really? Where are they getting this information from? They just make it up and put it on as the They news. got it from your fucking journal. Your live journal. Oh. A report by Mashed suggests that 
For those who have designated sauce packet drawer, it may be a good idea to do some downsizing of your stash. To be specific, Mash said you need to let go of those coveted packets of Chick-fil-A's Polynesian sauce. I don't have the Polynesian sauce because I don't like the Polynesian, Polynesian sauce. Polynesian sauce is extremely popular. Mash cited the Chick-fil-A website which said the sauce's delicious sweet and sour flavor is a favorite of folks on the U.S. East Coast. So if you're wondering how you could possibly part with those packets of delicious, Mashed suggests you consider a fatal flaw. Discover by fucking, hey, this is taking forever. There's an exploding sauce problem. How do they know? <laughs> how, cause they, how do they know? That's we're fake about news. to find out. No, no, they're just making shit up. There's nobody here. What is it? Dr. Dr. Mark Phillips? They cited users on Reddit who said that when their stockpiled Chick-fil-A's uh, Polynesian sauce, the tasty condiment has eaten right through the packet, resulting in a sticky... Oh, wait, so wait, that's not an explosion. Wait. That's that's a fucking chemical burn. That is a chemical it. problem. It seems others around the country are experiencing the same exploding sauce packet problem. That's who? They just say this fine. Some some guys like, yeah, man, my sauce is exploding. And then they post it. Did you like that other article or something? Is that what this is? No. I'm just trying to. I'm just wondering if like you were like, I really got, liked what that guy was saying. I really liked that he was. I thought it was something to think about. I mean, I don't I don't feel like I knew enough to be like right. this person on CBS is talking bullshit that Here, so he, it's a but i do understand is, the way the news works yeah it is a it's a fear-mongering article and i don't think it's healthy it's it's also it's very fucked up when something like that goes on on the internet it's complete bogus nothing right like there's it's there's 10 billion ways to cut back on power. Texting is not like the first 20. I mean, it right? kind of makes sense that like y people yes, are it doing it all the fucking time. Babe, yeah, you're right. You're right. Your people are doing it all the time, but they're doing There's a lot more energy being taken by so many other things. Just please, please hear me out. Okay. It's, and there's nothing you can do to, we're, we're only adding more electricity. There's more things are running on electricity. We have everything we buy is fucking more electricity. The text, the texts. How about, what? why didn't he say if fucking everybody stopped watching porn for a day? The earth would fucking just clear up like that, right? There's 10 million, even texting, like there's 10 million other things that you use your phone for that would be before it got to that point. And it's not, I don't think it's, it's, it sucks that they just put this shit out there and you're like, it's something to think about. No, it's, it's, it made you feel unnecessarily uncomfortable or, or think unnecessarily about something that you're doing every day or like think twice about it and have this fear that having this guilt, like, oh, I'm sending a text and I'm feeling like a little guilty. Maybe you're not going to feel like that. Like when we walk out of here, you're not thinking about it anymore, but someone definitely wrote that article, read that article. And from now on, every time they text, they're like, they feel guilty and shitty. And they shouldn't. They shouldn't feel guilty and shitty. It's stupid that this guy just... It's... It, it's... There's too many variables. There's too many things to say definitively. And the guy is clearly not an expert. He's a fucking journalist of something. He's just like... He's over sending thank yous. I mean, that's a joke aspect. He may he might be. I don't know. But... He just, they just put this article out and people read it and people are like, I feel really shitty now. I feel, I'm feeling shitty. I don't want, and that sucks. That's awful. And so I'm coming in with the insight to anybody that might've also saw it to, you think people don't read things like that with a critical eye. They just read it and you're like, oh my God, that texts are bad, I guess. Holy shit. Hey, do you hear? Texts are bad now. It's killing the earth if I text. Shit. Or you can look at it critically and be Apparently like, Apparently so are Chick-fil-A packets. I was just making fun of you for how passionate you were about the article. But I see now that and that was a very, a very poor joke because we got right back into the same spiral. I doubled down I was just on making it. fun of you. Is my face red again? Yeah, reading and yelling about you knowing the truth and these articles being lies. And I was just poking fun. So you saw how, I took it personally, how silly it was. I felt, I, I felt you t kind of took it personally when no, I was doing it. Cause I, just, I felt like maybe you thought I was like, no, I don't give a shit about the article. I hate the news. I don't trust mm. the news. I just, you were getting so worked up. 
I was. I so didn't I get was worked just, up. I just it was a Chick Fil A article, and I thought I could make fun of you. And but I was trying to make fun of you with the Chick Fil A article. That's why I chose it, because you saved the packets. I, you know, honestly, I was gonna come clean about something when we started this article. You had Chick Fil A today, didn't you? No, I didn't. Um, I remember in the very, very, very beginning of this beautiful love story that you expressed an immense amount of disdain for those who save packets and sauces from restaurants. So you cleared out your drawer? So for the past almost 32 years of my life, there has been a drawer in my refrigerator and the bottom it's solely designated for leftover packets. And then I met you and then I pretended that I, mm -mm, I don't, I don't do that. I definitely don't save sauces. Definitely not McDonald's picante sauce. Definitely not the Chinese packets. Definitely not Taco Bell sauces. Definitely not. No way. So I don't have that anymore. And then sometimes when I'm like, ooh, that sauce is good, I put just like two little packets right up in the top. I think that's okay. And then I never use them. I throw them away because I think they get old right. and it's And weird. you don't even use the massive ones. And the it's majority like of the them, time if I make yeah. Chick-fil-A sauce, I like make it. It's like the easiest thing to make. It's like, right. Fancy yeah. sauce. I like to make I'm it. really sorry I laughed at your passions. No, you're allowed to laugh. It's okay. I think it was mocking. You were mocking me, but it's okay. I guess you were sticking up for the glasses, fuck, and I get it. I just, I was also wondering when you were going to show everybody how cool you look with the glasses that you brought that you look cool in when you wear. I don't know. Were you just. Do you, wanna, you know what? No, go ahead. I, I feel like this really goes with your passion right now. God, you look ready to work out. I do. Are both these lenses in here? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to put them on because they look like that guy's glasses. This was way before that article. I was going to make a joke before we left the house and be like, babe, don't forget to show everybody the glasses so it's... you look super cool. And then we went outside before we left and I saw him clipped to your That's shirt. That's why I brought him. <laughs> That's why I brought him. Babe. I was like, I can't leave that. that so, that's a, such a large piece of um, road soda in our recent history. So I had to bring them so that everyone could uh, could see. I thought I was going to put them on in the intro, but I don't know if there'll be a video for the intro. So I'm Why glad. wouldn't there be? Because it's, it couldn't work as a standalone thing. Some people, right? Some people. One more article. Can we please just wrap this shit up before my computer fries? Somebody says that they keep the Chick-fil-A Polynesian sauce on deck in their purse in case of emergencies. Exploded today. In case of I appreciate that. In case of a in case of emergency. Yes. All right. Do you want some Polynesian sauce? This is a really long. I feel like if long... that guy had Polynesian sauce in his in his pocket, you'd be fucking weirded out. But some like girl with like some hot bitch with a purse pulled out Polynesian sauce, and you're like, oh, that's cool. But if the guy's like, you want some Polynesian sauce, he pulls it. That's out not true. I'd respect it. Yeah, you're, that's like the picture of the guy that has the bottle of Tabasco in his holster. Well, that guy's got like a whole thing. I'm talking. This guy's got pockets. Hey, can I watch you open it? Oh, like a diaper? Like a packet of shot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this last article and a rebuttal. <sighs> Do you have it up? Yes. Can you start reading it? Girl Scouts Jesus. rebuke Boy Scouts in escalating recruitment war. Oh, the fucking feud Nobody of the century, babe. gives a fuck. You thought, babe, you thought Tupac and Biggie, you think that was a feud? I love you. Nah. You thought the Jews and the Nazis? You think that was a feud? I feel like that's more comfortable I mean, for you. you. Comfortable, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The Jews and the not. Yeah, yeah. Comfort. That's what I think of. Mm, is a more comfortable metaphor for you as opposed to Tupac and Biggie. Yeah. Tupac and Biggie was like, you know, some like turf war kind of stuff. Not genocide. Name a Tupac and a Biggie song. And they never had a song together. I'll wait. One from either of them. 
I'm f- I'm freezing up, but I'm very familiar with Biggie's mm-hmm. stuff. No, I just I just thought it would be a more comfortable. Are you trying to? Because you are a Jew. Can you? Are you trying to get out of reading the article? And I'm a chocolate lover. Are you trying to get out of reading the article? The Girl Scouts are in a highly damaging recruitment war with the Boy Scouts after the latter opened its core services to girls, leading to marketplace confusion and some girls unwittingly joining the Boy Scouts. <laughs> Lawyers for the century-old Girl Scouts organization <laughs> claim in court papers. I just picture like girls like doing push-ups and they're like, "Are we gonna wear? Are there gonna be cookies? Are we gonna sell the cookies?" Yeah, like, I mean, this ain't never, the Girl Scouts. We never like got to learn how to like go out and camp and start a fire and do yeah. cool shit like that. We just learned how to like bake cookies and be bitches. Yep, sell cookies and be bitches. It's crazy. there wasn't like any like I know we had like fun get-togethers and stuff where we're like color and make soft crafts, but like I get it. Yeah, I also cut my hair like a boy and only wear the boys' uniform to school, so I get it. They want to they want to learn some yeah. cool tools. And I think anybody, yeah, that sh- it should be open, and there should be a group that's not like the Girl Scouts because what the Girl Scouts started and what it is today is like a bit different because it really yeah. did start as like it was this really super bad bitch who was in World War Two, I think, or maybe it was World War One, and she um, was like a nurse and she like saved all these people's lives and just fucking want to make sure every girl knew how to clean a house and make a sandwich. She just wanted to knew that she just wanted to empower women and make them like have not. And it wasn't, it wasn't just that kind of uh, housekeeping stuff. It was, <laughs> it was like all kinds of shit. It was like, it was almost like the boy scouts, like going out yeah. and camping and doing that kind of shit like that to make women empowered and not have to be so dependent on men. And now it's literally just, like a giant fucking cookie Ponzi scheme. So I don't think it's a Ponzi scheme, but those cookies are delicious. That, that's why it works. <laughs> you know it. Those cookies sell themselves. If Girl Scouts don't even have to try, they just show up and go, "Who wants a Samoa?" I'm like, bitch, bitch, me. I want a doshi dough. I'll get whatever you can handle. Um, me. a judge reject to reject claims that the Boy Scouts cannot use Scouts and scouting in its recruitment of girls without infringing trademarks. This is a trial of trademark infringement. Oh my God. So that's what, I mean, that makes more sense because the lawyer was like, these girls accidentally signed up. It's like, how about the girls probably didn't sign themselves up. It was probably the parents. So the, the parents are, yeah. are not reading into what they're doing for their kids. They're just, oh, fucking get out of my hair. Yeah, it says it blames the Girl Scouts for reacting to its expansion plans with anger and alarm. Yes. And then the Girl Scouts launched a ground war to spoil plans by the Boy Scouts to include more girls. You're taking our free workforce. You're taking our child slave labor <laughs> that we use to sell cookies as a non-profit organization and we need better numbers next year than we had this year. I and we quote, can't do that if more girls are fishing. Sorry, go ahead. Dude, you are freaking me out today. I was trying to crank it up because you made it's very because of what happened earlier and you were like, go oh, cranked up. So I was just seeing how lit Liddy I could get. Liddy titty. Yeah, go ahead. Continue. Please. I'm scared. Please, baby. I quote, extraordinary and highly damaging to Girl Scouts. And I also quote, set off an a- a explosion of confusion. Mm, confusion. Where am I? What is happening? Why am I not? Why don't I have sewing needles right now? Yeah, I keep going into legal mumbo jumbo about. Yeah, we don't care. This is from AP News. So this, you know this is a legit the something press. What is it? AP, what does that stand for again? Associated Press. Whew. Greg knows stuff like that. Dude, this that. is so long. I know. Stop trying to read it. It's boring me. All right, guys. Thanks for listening to news. But how... Thank you. This will... Next time... Next, next time on the news, we'll be here. I think something. Isaiah and Greg. And now, how about another word from our sponsors? <laughs> 